So today I am with Automatic Gainsay and he just did a video on this my grandmother and how was it? It was amazing. Uh, it's it's hard to get over how good it sounds. It really, and people say that, but seriously, it just has the analog, analog tone that anyone would ever want coming out of anything. I tell you, yeah, I, I actually agree because I was playing on this in the, um, in the tent and it was pretty damn good. Like, But right now we're gonna do something a little bit interesting. Basically, I figured why don't we see what's inside because I've heard there's actually some doodles and illustrations all over the inside circuit board of this thing. Apparently in the prototyping stage, they just drew some stuff and it lasted all the way to the manufacturing thing. And Mogul said I could take this apart, I'm, I think. So we're gonna do it and Mark's gonna just um, fill us in and how the hell. Real spring reverb, that's true, but what Mark's just gonna fill us in on like what's going on. It's my guess that because they were Moog was doing so much work with reproducing the, the big the 1974 Moog modulars, that they probably wanted to apply some of that technology that they were uncovering and uh, use it in a, a synth. And I think it's a great idea. This is uh, apparently largely based on the Model 15 or Synthesizer 15 or it's also called System 15. But you, like, the reason why I asked if you wanted to do this is because basically I can't think of, of, of people I know, of anybody probably more knowledgeable on synthesizer history in general. It's right. quite, it's quite amazing, like we were speaking about, like, is it Moog or is it Moog? Actually, it, it was both of them at some point, right? It was. Uh, it, the, the family name was actually pronounced Moog originally, which I know is giving fuel to all of you who say Moog, but don't take any fuel. Uh, Bob decided, Bob and his wife Shirley decided to pronounce it Moog for a variety of reasons, and that was it. So, it is actually Moog. I'm gonna just, uh, it seems so awkward, now I know don't how to Don't use it as a justification. It. Oh, fresh synthesizer. Mmm, <laughs> still warm from the factory. Okay, we got. A, I'm gonna pull the ribbon cables off before we have a look first. Don't pull it that way! Oh, there it was, it's a clip. Okay, the bass is gonna come away in a second when I get the keyboard. Oh, it's a bit awkward. Okay, so, here we go. I'm just gonna put this one aside. We're gonna have a look first at the disemboweled part of this beautiful machine. Really heavy. I thought it was actually, when I first saw it, I thought it was plastic, for mm. some reason. It's mostly well, metal. the older one, like, the older ones were often plastic. The Rogue is like... Oh yeah, the Rogue is, isn't it? And the Micro Moog, that's super plastic, isn't it? It's, a, yeah, the, the body itself, and then the end caps are metal and wood, but yeah, it's got mm. that weird molded plastic. So if you could see inside, we've got one, two, three circuit boards. They're obviously all facing backwards. And now it's just a case of pulling off all the knobs. Let's get the knobs off. Oh my God, I don't believe we're taking this apart. I'm not strong enough. Right How is Mo going to feel about this? Mark Dose, you're taking it apart. <laughs> How do you feel That's, about this? I can't get out of this, can I? No, I mean, you can if you want. I've if you, been spotted. If you're offended, then please leave, no, right now. <laughs> I just realized um, I've done rocky mistake number one, and that's um, take apart something without actually having a, um, a place to put oh, everything. Yeah. <laughs> like, is this similar at all to a mini Moog? The weird thing is, it sounds like a mini Moog more than, if you wanted a mini Moog and couldn't afford a mini Moog, and wanted to stick with Moog as a company, as you probably should, um, this would be the thing you would get, although the technology in it, I mean, there's always overlap between the early Moog modulars and the, the mini Moog. I mean, there's some overlap, but a lot of the stuff was redesigned. So if this is based on the 1974 Model 15, like it is, it's actually different than the mini Moog. However, because it has the Moog filter, uh, a very distinctive Moog filter sound and a lot of the functionality like uh, a mod oscillator that's actually a third oscillator because there's that same sort of overlap in the mini Moog but it's backwards it's labeled an oscillator but it's actually a modulator this is labeled a modulator but it's also an oscillator you can make mini Moog sounds on this thing that sound really really mini Moog ish it's basically a mini Moog with different labels Right, sort and with, with different design too, but yeah. designed close enough 
and mogish enough. They're building it like a bloody proper proper tank. Jeez. It is very sturdily built. They're probably like, no, don't use metal pliers on the plastic nuts, no! Oh no, I'm gonna have to find a mini screwdriver. I might run downstairs and see if I can find one. The host has left the show. Oh, hello, I'm looking Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's my impersonation. A straggler has walked in. A strangler. A strangler. I'm basically just watching this thing unfold and telling Moog wow. stories in the parts where... <laughs> oh, it's like story time. You know what the worst part is with, like, speaking from a... I, I take a lot of things apart. Take a seat. Pull what do you mean? Pull putting it together. How would you pronounce it, Simon? Moog or Moog? Uh, mo moch. <laughs> moch. <laughs> How many jokes about that have you made? Um, well, actually, si um, Simon, Mark's had an interesting... He's got a bit of interesting trivia about it. He did the whole name. Yeah, yeah. yeah oh, did you know we had a presentation more, about more the name. Time. That's what I... That's just what I do. I rant about stuff. I, know, I, I, I appreciate it. Like, I, I remember watching quite a few of your synthesizer rants. And I quite like them. What was it about poly polyphony? Oh you were saying something about polyphony. That was your video. It's like, what is it? It's like, I a series not true of... polyphony. I really did no it. such thing as true polyphony. Polyphony is whether it plays more than two notes at a time at all, no matter how they're filtered or articulated. Mm -hmm. Polyphony is just many notes. Yeah. And so, But it gets confusing because people want those notes to be articulated, to be actual voices. So when they're not actual voices, people feel like they're not right. They're not real. So this is the first circuit board. I have no idea what's going on because I have no idea what to look at at this thing. Is there any labels? But it looks pretty funky, but I have a feeling they're talking about this with the illustrations, but... So we've got here, we've got the power filter in. As you can see, this little bit right there, there's power filter in going over. There's, a, there's actually like a chip that seems to know what it's doing in the modern world. This program to probably be the sequencer and the no, arpeggiator and stuff. Yeah. And we're going further along. I have no idea. Well, it will make more sense. I never open things up because I have this superstitious fear of it breaking. It breaking because we I all have that. I don't know well, electronics. I don't even like. What? Well, and you think I do? <laughs> the sign wise is very appealing to just. You see, you see here. You see a picture online. Yeah, you're like, you just want to have the grandmother. Yeah. In your kitchen. I I want it. Uh, I love it. <laughs> Like it's the fact, furniture. The other thing is, I'm a little bit um, I, I I'm no, not the biggest fan of mini jack sockets. No, no, no. no. But you this one, big. this one here, it I don't think that I don't feel that when I've got it because the fact is the knobs are all spaced correctly yeah. to be able to be like a crazy. It's not crowded. Yeah, it's not crowded like um, a lot of things are. Hey, Whoa. here we go. The actual PC boot board has come off the back. So let's just have a quick look at the chassis first. But look at that. It's like that is solid. That that is a hefty chunk of stuff. Looking in here, you can actually see that where is where is the filter base? All of these that I was wrong with the circuits. Is. So there's a ladder. Oh, they've got a ladder for the ladder filter. Look how cute that is. Oh. So that's what we were talking about, the little illustrations. And there's a little it's a little dog. Is that a dog? Is that a dog? <laughs> oh no no, it's a, a blender. It's yeah. like a Oh it's a mixer! Yeah. It's oh. The mixer! Oh there's the beautiful ladder in the um, surface mount. I might be wrong. So to make a ladder ladder filter, you need matched transistors, which means that half of the actual job of building something like this is you need to spend hours finding transistors that are nearly exactly the same. They're like twins, like counteracting each other and the filter will work. If it isn't, then it will just be a little bit distorted and a bit of a crappy filter. So these have actually got packages. I mean, I might be pulling this out of my ass, but it looks like they got packages of matched transistors. So there's, they've got six legs because transistors have three legs. The matched one will have six. Put timestamps in the comments with the uh, notes. <laughs> <laughs> the notes. Yeah. Information. Yes, information. You know, for ladder filter information, you go to you this. You go to this time one. Stamp. There's an actual picture of an envelope. Like, why aren't these on the board? I mean, I quite that like it. That looks like yeah, two yeah. envelopes, though. How? So, yeah. that's misleading. But can that envelope loop? It can loop. No, can it can't. No. No, no. So maybe... Well, <laughs> dual envelope. No, it's not a dual envelope. Well, you could send a trigger to it. It is the trigger very interesting. Re -trigger. It is interesting. Let's yeah, not. Who is it getting with the with the funny graphic? Because every company, everybody does that, and not mm. everybody looks. In, not everybody gets to enjoy that. Yeah, I think it's something that's been around for a long time. Like yeah. the, all of this, uh, like the creators want to know that some people will open it up, and some people will smile when they see a mixing cake mixer. 
That's the reverb tank. So the oh, reverb, I haven't got to that yet. So what this is, so you see there's a spring there. This is the um, uh, the, the amplifier and that the, uh, take the sends and receives the signal to the spring reverb. We go over to this beast. Oh my God, it's watch. <laughs> it's like, it's like literally built like a synthesizer from the seventies. And that's why I quite like it a lot because it's like, this is exactly the same as you would find in something like an MS-10 or an MS-20. And that's the whole reason why I love them because they're so big and impractical, you know? But this over just here, like you. just like me, <laughs> big and impractical. Yeah, oh, thanks, son. <laughs> so we got right here, we've got the uh, the spring reverb board and no doubt if Simon got a hold of this, he would pull it out, stick it out the front and be like, hey, look at this. I'll probably do that as well. Strumming the spring. Strumming it. It's actually pretty cool yeah, though. Yeah. But like the fact is it's a legit, you know, spring reverb. Oh my God. I think, oh no, that's to hold the boards. I thought there was actually mounting holes so you it's could get, get a bigger one. To oh, make a bigger yeah. one. There is actually space for you to get a bigger one. And you could probably, if you just open the back of it, you could probably put any old spring reverb in here and it might just fit. It seems like there's room for it. Yeah, because those are not, uh, yeah. 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 Uh, you were talking about like spring reverbs holding, held up by springs or held up. Should we look inside yes. to see? Should well, we look I'll tell you like this because I have spring reverb experience at Buchla. This is not how the spring re reverb is mounted in an easel. Uh, there's a spring reverb uh, larger than this actually in the easel, but it is separated from the case and mounted with springs to reduce vibration and the mechanical movement of the reverb uh, tank itself generates a lot of challenges. This is a metal box screwed to a metal box. It's not moving, it's not going anywhere. So that's, uh, this is a, a good spring reverb design. And the pro of that is when you hit the case, you get a nice chow. That's the only reason I'm gonna get one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, most of it is. Yeah, oh, every component. No, nice. it's down there. Oh no, the bolt, the bolt fell in. Oh! <laughs> right. Anyway, remember that's red. Um, the, yeah, that's pretty easy to remember. Go and have a look. Take a look. Oh, pop it, yeah. pop it here, and whilst I fish out this thing. Hence the name Spring yeah. Reverb. If you're wondering where the word comes from, shake it a little bit. Oh, it's so shaky, shaky. Chang, you can actually Chang. twang it. Yeah. You do it. So if you own a Moog uh, grandmother and you want to add a little bit of a mod, you know, like it's a, not not a big mod, just a little one. Just get out a bit of gaffer tape, just stick, it <laughs> stick it on the back. Stick it right there. Like, chang, chang, chang. We've dismembered this Moog. How bad is that? And the final piece of the puzzle is the key bed, which is nowadays key beds are pretty they, they're pretty down to a t you'd be struggling to find a bad key bed on a modern synthesizer unless it's mini keys but full size it's a full size key it's small but this one's got like quite a bit of tension like the springs are pretty strong and it feels like you're fighting against it which is good i'm not saying it does it feels hefty everything feels about good. this is hefty i guess atomic loves fighting with this i do <laughs> yeah That's, it's about to fight if i'm not punishing the keys i don't feel like i've earned the music <laughs> Oh, that's the best merch oh, <laughs> ever. I don't know what else we could talk about. That is literally it in pieces. And I'm really nervous because I've got to actually put this back together and work it. Oh my God, I've just noticed something. These these wires are actually, they're hoser. They're hoser branded phono cables. So the actual, the actual way that they're connecting the spring reverb to the actual board is via a splitter mini jig to phono, which is fair enough. It's, yeah, yeah. it's probably actually the solidest way of doing it in the modern age. Moog on here, should we, should, I've got a mini jack but socket. So that jack is on the inside. Yeah, and that, yeah, yeah. And that has got the input and the output of the spring reverb. So yeah. you can put that on the back, get whatever spring reverb you want. Can we do that now? <laughs> <laughs> so that is the Moog grandmother disemboweled. Wish me luck putting it back together. And also, like I said, Mark did a much more thorough version of talking about the grandmother and playing it. So if you wanted to see what it sounded like, <laughs> then you should go and check it out. Oh no. Oh, the sticky stuff came off. Oh well, I'm gonna get it back together. It will work. It will work. I promise it. Oh, can I have those, please? Are I'm you gonna be in trouble the now. Viewers, or because then you have to. I need to prove yeah, that. Yeah, you need to show that. Okay, well, I'm gonna go and do a time lapse downstairs of putting it back together. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Diamond Wipe Club. I love, we you, love you. Love you, Henning. Bye. <laughs> Diamond Web Club. <laughs>
Diamond Wipe Club. This is the fifth take now. <laughs>